Yeah, I don't know what the uh I don't know what the goal here was. You all saw this, right? Over in DC, uh a per here, a Missouri man flew to Washington, rented a U-Haul truck and drove straight to the White House where he crashed the truck into a security barrier and began waving around a Nazi flag in the culmination of a 6-month plan to seize power from the government. Did it work? Did it did it did it work? They're not saying if it worked or not. Did it work? The, the crazy thing is he's Indian. Sai Varshith Kandula, 19, removed the flag from a backpack shortly after smashing the box truck into the barrier near the north side of Lafayette Square on Monday around 10 p.m., according to charging documents. Quickly arrested by a U.S. Park police officer who rushed to the scene of the crash, saw him take out the flag. Man, you know, probably got kind of lucky that it was a U.S. Park police officer and not, you know, the Secret Service. Kandala, who's from St. Louis of Chesterfield, Missouri, said he brought the flag online because he, not, he admires the Nazis' great history as well as their authoritarian nature, eugenics, and their one world order. Didn't, di it wasn't Gandhi approving of Hitler? Because, uh, like, Hitler was anti-British or something, right? So even Gandhi, like, spoke positively of Hitler. Wild stuff. Do you have any idea how strong these ballards are? You're not, whoa, 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 whoa you... What are you talking about? You 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 can't get through that with this little bump. Uh, well, well, to be fair, he could drive into these at 120 miles an hour and still not get through them. So, do they show the Nazi flag on the ground that got taken out? No. Okay. Well, here's a here's a picture. There we go. It's it's this one right here. He's folding it up in this. There's a clearer image of it online. Feels like a Breaking Bad cold open. Dude is uh dude is not well. This uh my my fine fellow over here. You know, the funny thing is, I actually got uh, a, a DM. This is from some right-wing account. I won't, I won't draw attention to them specifically. But he DM'd me this image, because I have my DMs open. He said, yeah, because this guy is Nazi, you absolute clown. This was set up for the media. Uh, and I responded, I'm being condescending here. I don't normally respond to people who DM me, okay? Uh, if it's a media psyop, why wouldn't they use a white guy? Surely that would be way more effective. Also, Google white supremacy and neo-Nazism in Latin America. Because I, I assume this guy is Latin, because he's brown, and when brown people have Nazi flags in America, they're usually from Latin America. Just kind of how it tends to work out. I believe you can be better than what you are now. Good luck. And he was like, he's Indian. Now what's your explanation? <laughs> so then I typed out some more stuff on, like, how non-white people can be white supremacists. The, the biggest argument that I like, that I've never gotten a retort to, was if you think that white leftists are anti-white, and feminist men are anti-male, then why can't there be Nazi Indians who are, are pro-white? Like, why can't that be a thing, you know? Um, and I haven't gotten a response. I don't know, I've never gotten a response to that. I really wish that I could. Because it's, it's like they can't, they have to acknowledge it. Because they can't pretend they don't think that white leftists are anti-white. Matt Walsh has a video calling this a PSYOP. All of them immediately, all of the right wing, immediately started calling this a PSYOP. With like, no reservations whatsoever. Just right off the dome. Just whoosh. Totally normal, of course, for the police to neatly lay out the evidence at a crime scene so reporters can take pictures. Uh, just with no hesitation at all. Basically all of them. They're already calling it a PSYOP in the comments. And thanks to uh, Elon Musk with the blue checks, a.k.a. conservatives at the top, because it probably is lol. Hey, David. Oh, he's a Nazi. Concerning. If he was a leftist, he would have used a train. True. Why are they so eager to downplay white supremacy? I wonder. This guy is clearly, like, uh, incredibly mentally ill, as evidenced by his, his phenomenal plan to take power from the U.S. government. So, we're not really dealing with a rational thought process from this one. You know, obviously, he's a Nazi or a Nazi sympathizer, as if there's a difference. Most Nazis are, though. Yes, there are a lot of deeply mentally ill Nazis, for sure. It is a, it is a common trend. That is definitely the case. What's really wild is they could just use this to point out how liberals are turning non-white people into Nazis or something. Just abysmal framing on this part. I could do better, not gonna lie. I, I do think it's pretty funny now that any time a Nazi does anything bad publicly, every conservative rushes to the, to the microphone to say, this is a way of framing us, because they're not even pretending that they're not connected to the Nazis anymore. It used to be that when Nazis did something bad, the right wing would go, well, that's horrible. You know, Nazism is terrible. 
And then inevitably when the comparisons come out, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, like they would do, they would pretend like, oh, you know, where are you connecting this to us? But now they don't even do that. Now, like immediately they just jump, they just jump over that gap and they're like, whoa, well, this is clearly an attack to frame us. An Indian guy with a Nazi flag? That's an attack on us, obviously, because, you know, because it's because it's a Nazi flag and we're Nazi. Oh, whoa, 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 you know. Non-stop with these people. Incredible. He praised eugenics and authoritarianism. Yeah, yeah, we saw in the thing. Oh, is this like a full rundown of his beliefs? When agents asked how Kandula would seize power, he stated he would, quote, kill the president if that's what I have to do and would hurt anyone that would stand in my way. John Wick over here. Kandula made clear in his interview that by the president, he meant the president of the United States. Kandula said he'd been planning for six months. Kandula said his actions at the White House had been successful because his intention was to send a message to us. Okay. When asked what Kandula meant by us, Kandula stated a message was, was meant to be sent to all organizations like the Secret Service. Uh, Kandula added, either way, when I got into the White House or not, my message was received. Kandula was asked if he knew how dangerous his actions were and stated he knew he would be arrested, but his book would get out to those who need to see it. No, it was all a grift. His GoFundMe's already up, I doubt, no doubt. By book, Kandula said this referred to his green book, which is an outlet for his thoughts. Kandula said he eventually started writing his plans to enter the White House and he would accomp what he would accomplish if he was in charge. And there was the thing of the Nazis. Well, now I want to read this green book. It's probably, like, incomprehensible. Do you think all eugenics is bad as ju or just negative eugenics? You know, I'll say when eugenics is brought up by people waving Nazi flags, I'd probably disagree with their preferred iteration, you know? I don't know. If if you could give pregnant mothers a, a, a pill that would turn their, like, uh, their unborn children into gigachads who will be able to bench press trial, you know, I don't know, whatever. It's the future. Go for it. Uh, typically, historically, when eugenics gets brought up, it's, uh, not, in the, not in the best context, you know, not, not the best, not good, not great even. Nice, it's a ghost. I love the irony of calling it a green book. Yeah, I was wondering if this was, a, the, like, a reference to Gaddafi, like, if he knows, but, yeah. Do you believe Build-A-Babies are pipelines to eugenics? What? Why are we talking about eugenics now? Whenever whenever um, Nazi eugenics comes up, everyone races to the comment section to remind them that you're like an enlightened 19th century uh, intellectual who understands the potential eugenics has for human development. Look, I think I think basically everyone except for like really dumb people or people with a like weird set of ethics would agree that some kind of eugenics is good. If by some kind of eugenics, we mean like, you know, Oh, yeah, here's, like, a medicine pregnant women can take that reduces the risk of your children being born with congenital diseases or blindness. Uh, like, right? Like, yeah. I'll say, oh, well, g you know, the genome of your kid, you have, like, a genetic susceptibility to Alzheimer's and to, you know, other conditions. So we can go... Doo -doo 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 fix it, and then it's like, oh, you know, I think, I think most people would agree with that. Obviously, the problem that people have with eugenics comes more in the form of, like, forced and selective breeding <laughs> that's um that's typically where the where the bad stuff exists you know that's not eugenics though no it totally is yeah you're you're selectively genetically developing the yeah yeah but there's a question of what is a disease like is autism a disease i don't think that autism is a disease i think that um i think that like why why not start with the easy ones okay couldn't can't we like can't we like deal with the ge like the genetic diseases like the real ones first like the, like, I don't know. I feel like we could, um, I feel like we could, we could do better with that. No, it's not eugenics. If it's state mandated, individual choice is not eugenics. All right. Well, here's a, here's an ethical quandary for you. Okay. If there was a drug that pregnant women could take or a mild procedure that would genetically alter their, um, uh, their unborn children and the genetic alterations would make their unborn children healthier in every conceivable way, they would live on average to 120. They would have a higher, like, uh, a, a longer health span, like a healthy living, not just how long they live, stronger, faster, blah, blah. They just get to be better people. Would it be ethical for people to not take that and force their children to live the comparatively weak, frail, and short life of an unaltered human being? 
And the corollary to that would be, considering the fact that these are genetic alterations, you know, eventually this is going to spread naturally through, you know, just people reproducing. So it's, it's kind of like a, you know, inevitably. What do you think of artificial wombs? Artificial wombs are fine. They're completely fine. Would schizophrenia be something beneficial to cure? Pro probably, I think. Schizophrenia can be pretty bad. What if it leads to the eradication of pe things people consider to be undesirable, like smallpox? We've talked about this before. You know, it's, um... It's like, well, okay, if you can do a genetic thing that leads to this good outcome, what if people do bad outcome? Well, I agree with the good outcomes. But right now, we're not even doing that. Right now, we're not even doing any of this. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't think there's, there's much point. I thought smallpox was already eradicated. Well, kind of. I was the one who brought it up. Okay, stop.